Kreuzer, welcome to this instructional video on the management of epistaxis or nosebleed in the emergency department and on the ward. To make things simpler in Swansea Bay, we have a six step management algorithm for epistaxis. This can be followed from ABCDE recess, simple first aid, cautery, as well as nasal packing and surgical intervention. Step 6. Posterior packing. Posterior packing should be undertaken by a senior registrar but you should still be aware of how it's done and be able to get the equipment ready. By this stage, the patient will still be bleeding down their throat and have two nasal packs fully inflated with 10 mils of air each. As the patient is becoming increasingly likely to need surgical intervention, such as sphenopalatine artery ligation and general anaesthetic, the patient should be kept nil by mouth. You need to prepare a size 12 Foley catheter, an umbilical clip, gauze, tongue depressor and two further rapid rhinos. A Foley's catheter is not licensed in the UK and where able, specialised posterior packs should be utilised. However, this method can be used where specialist packs are unavailable, using readily available equipment and a well-recognised technique. Once again, the patient may require anaesthetic. Your registrar will adopt the same position as for anterior bleeding, with good lighting and protective clothing. Shown here are both the right and left-handed positions. Once all prior packing has been removed, the procedure can begin. Insert the catheter into the nostril parallel to the floor of the nasal cavity. Pack the side with the greatest bleeding. Advance the catheter until the tip can be seen in the oropharynx. Inflate the balloon with 10 ml of water, not saline, and pull the catheter until the post-nasal space and the cona is occluded. Keep hold of the catheter and ensure the patient keeps their head still or rested against the bed. Then insert the rapid rhino alongside the catheter using the same technique as for anterior packing. Finally, use an umbilical clip to clamp the catheter, preventing the balloon from falling posterior inferiorly. It is vital to place gauze in between the clip and the skin of the alar area to prevent alar necrosis. It is worth mentioning that not everyone follows this algorithm and so you may find that some patients have received anterior packing without nasal cautery. Patients with the nasal packs will need invitering. Packs that have stayed in situ for longer than 24 hours may pose an infection risk and prophylactic antibiotics should be considered at this stage. Discuss with the on-call registrar regarding this. In any event, the pack will need removing in order to cauterise. Should be done so gently with the application of water around the pack in order to soften it. Remember, when dealing with epistaxis, if you follow the algorithm, you will not go far wrong. Thank you for watching. Hoyle Valve.